only on Rogers. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Bev Miller and welcome to Addictions Unplugged. Each week, my co-host Dr. Vera Tarman will answer your questions and concerns about addiction. Tonight, we're going to be discussing food addiction. Now, unlike many other addictions, food is something that we need in order to survive. Therefore, it might be difficult for some to believe that it can indeed become an addiction but it is for many. Joining Vera and myself on today's show is Mike McKinnon, a recovered food addict, certified personal trainer, and spiritualist minister. Vera, your specialty is food addiction. Mm -hmm. And I know you've got a book coming out later this year called Food Junkies, The Truth About Food Addiction. That's right. And in the book, you're talking about people's experiences with food addiction, recovering from it. Tell us a bit about this book. Yeah, this book is a, it's a book about um, food addiction. And what I do is I talk about the science of food addiction, or the definition of food addiction, how you know if you are a food addict, uh, the science behind it as far as we have it so far. And then I actually give some clinical scenarios, like s actual real stories of people uh, that, I, that I know about um, who have food addiction. And you'll see um, people who are not so sure, we're not really sure if they're food addicts. We'll see people who um, are uh, sometimes, uh, you often classify it as having an eating disorder mm -hmm. uh, 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 to people who are outright food addicts. Uh, and I'll show the progression of the disease or the illness, the disorder, um, and then we actually talk then about the recovery and uh, really look at how recovery from food addiction is very different than recovery from um, other disorders like an eating disorder. And that's why it's so important to be diagnosed as a food addict versus something else because the actual treatment is very different. Um, and then I'll actually talk about the fact that it is recoverable and we'll actually have um, examples of people who are in recovery, much like we have on the show today with Mike. Fantastic. So yeah. what is food addiction? What does it involve? Well, food addiction is, uh, first of all, it's not, it's not addicted addiction to all food, uh, usually not. Okay. Um, it, it, we talk about it in the context of um, if you have behavioral patterns that are addictive patterns around specific foods. And uh, it, it, it actually depends, it's not, it's not across the board for everybody mm -hmm. that people are addicted to the same things, but almost always invariably 98.9% .9 uh, sugar is the top sugar. one. Uh, because a sugar is addictive even if you're not a food addict. Absolutely. It's, it's very addictive. And then uh, white flour, um, which is pretty much sugar and digestible uh, within five minutes. So we can prob probably say that um, that's number, th th that's top on the list. Mm -hmm. But people can be even addicted to things that, like you might be addicted to one thing and I'm not to another. Like some people can't eat nuts um, and that, or some, some type of fats or some type of salts. Okay. Um, so you have to kind of figure out what, uh, addict what your trigger foods are. But what I, when you figured out what they are, then it's a question of you, you, your behavior is much the same as the way an alcoholic treats their drink or a coca coca cocaine addict treats their cocaine. They have the same type of behavior patterns and require the same type of treatment. So compulsively eating these things That's right, yeah. every day, throughout the day, well, is, not that, necess not, is that not, it? Not necessarily compulsively eating. They might okay. be somebody who's actually just thinking about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, Believe it or not, I, I'm convinced that um, a lot of people who are diagnosed as anorexics, um, and you think they're not eating at all, mm -hmm. um, but they're obsessing about food all the time to the point where you could argue that that too is an addiction and it's just one part of the larger picture of food addiction. And I actually think that there's a lot, I, I mean I don't have numbers because we, we, there's not the research yet, uh, we need to have clinical research, but I think that there's a lot of misdiagnosis. People who are being diagnosed with food e um, f um, eating disorders or just plain obesity mm -hmm. um, and are not getting the diagnosis of food addiction and therefore aren't getting the treatment and then therefore are inevitably always um, uh, failing at their treatment because wow. they're not they're not getting the right treatment exactly yeah well you know let's go to Mike Mike as a recovered food addict you know how all-consuming and devastating this can be share with us your story if you would please you know, pretty much um, for me all my life it was a question of uh, you know when could I get more and and how much more could I get um, the the thing was I was I was always thinking about food from the time I was a kid I can remember um, in the uh, in my early years, parents bringing home food from restaurants, um, uh, and and I'd be into it. I'd be up at six in the morning and I'd be into it, yeah. and it was just it was all consuming all the time. 
Um, and basically what Vera was talking about, um, foods like sugars, flours, that sort of thing, they were the big things. They were the things that I, I would always go to. Mm -hmm. And really the, the main characteristic of it was is that I struggled with weight all my life. Not a lot, pretty much. I'd be up 10 pounds, down 10 pounds, up 20, down 20. But I was never able to get where I wanted to be. You know, okay. I mean, eventually it did get to being 85 pounds overweight because that's the problem with it is that it progresses. It gets mm -hmm. worse over time. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, the thing was I was just, I was infatuated with food. I thought about it all the time. And I didn't realize it at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm thinking about it all the time until I'm sitting on this side of it now and I'm able to look at it going, it, it was the most important thing in my life. Wow. We have a picture of you, a before picture. Right. yeah. It was taken and, in 2003. Uh, right, and that was your, your heaviest weight? That was it, 245 pounds. 245 yeah. pounds. Yeah. And then how did you start to turn things around? Well, the interesting thing about it was initially um, I used a good old-fashioned diet. Hmm. The thing about food addiction is that it's progressive. In the early stages of food addiction, we mm -hmm. actually, people like me, do have willpower, uh, have the ability to overcome it. So I just threw another diet at it. But the thing was, six months later, 85 pounds less, and now I'm going to the gym and I'm feeling good and I'm looking better and all that stuff. Next thing I know, it's a good idea to go back out and try some of the old foods that I'd given up. Mm -hmm. And my weight loss coach at the time, even though he didn't understand food addiction, he was smart enough to say, Mike, stay away from those foods. Those right. are the things that are a problem for you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, I thought I was smarter than him and I went back to them. And I entered into a pattern of losing, gaining, losing, gaining, losing, gaining. Mm -hmm. Thing was, I was into bodybuilding at the time, and I was into exercising, so I was able to use that as a, as a method of purging. Mm. Telling myself I'm being healthy, going to the gym three hours a night, seven days a week. But really, it was no, it was no different than, than how other people purge. And um, mm -hmm. what happened was, at the end of it, I'd entered into a cycle where the disease took over, mm -hmm. and I do believe food addiction is a disease. I'd lost all control, uh -huh. diets weren't working anymore, mm -hmm. and now I, I just lost all control. Certified personal trainer with a full dossier of clients, and now I'm gaining weight. I'm 10 pounds, I'm 20 pounds, I'm 30 pounds, I'm almost 40 pounds up, I'm not looking so good anymore. My whole employment, my career, everything's at risk, mm -hmm. and what am I going to do? I had to reach out and I had to do something different. Incredible. And you know, if, if, if I had... Oh, um, if, 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 if Mike had come into my doors uh, in 2003, 2004, I would have probably diagnosed him as an exercise bulimic, um, you know, a, a person who overate and then purged through exercise. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have thought of the concept of food addiction. Very interesting. Do you have any difficulties with food? Are you addicted to food? Give us a call. Give us a call. We'll talk with, talk with you about that. So you were a personal trainer during this time. Yeah, there's the crazy thing, okay? Oh. So I know more than your average person right. about weight loss. I was doing competitive bodybuilding, and competitive bodybuilders know more about fat loss than Absolutely. anybody else. They know how to manipulate right. all the right hormones yeah. to get yourself down to 4, 5, 6% body fat. Mm. And even with all this knowledge, it got to a point where I did not have the power to be able to moderate my eating. Instead of being able to moderate it, mm -hmm. like I said, I was gaining weight rapidly. And of course, getting older, hormonal changes, right. I'm no longer able to exercise as much and I couldn't keep up with it. So yes. I had to face it. So willpower mm -hmm. that's the key. is yeah. not no. See, that's something that you can rely on. No, no. I mean, that's, that's, that's the real key with addiction, exactly. Right. I, and if, if, if there's anybody out there wondering if they're a food addict or, you know, if they just got bad willpower, I mean, it, it, that's really the key right there. Um, uh, when, when we're talking about uh, an, 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 in the addictive realm, willpower is not useful. I mean, it, it, it is, as Mike said, in the very first stages, it mm -hmm. might be fine. You know, you can moderate your use to a certain degree, but it gets progressively worse, and willpower just does not work. The, or even if you don't use the substance, the obsessional thinking will drive you mad, uh, and you can't control that. Wow. So then, how do you treat this? Hmm. Good question. Well, do you want to talk about what, how, how you sure. treated it? Sure, I can tell you what I did. I, yeah. you know, what did you do? I, again, I don't speak for other people, but I'll tell you what worked for me. I had to recognize that I had three problems, and Vera touched on the first one. The first one is that I had a mental obsession. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that ever since I was young, I, I thought about food all the time, but I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. As my disease had progressed, it got to a place where all I was doing was thinking about it 24-7 until I would go and I would eat again, mm -hmm. and that introduced the second problem 
I have a body that doesn't process food like a normal person, certain foods. Specifically for me, I've identified flour, sugar, and wheat products mm -hmm. I have to stay away from. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's all flours. That's not just wheat flour. That's mm -hmm. flour of any kind. Okay. Right. And we see that more and more Even today. Oh, absolutely. You know, with yeah. so many people having that very same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. because like Vera said, it, it acts in the bloodstream much like sugar does. It has a, it has a higher glycemic value than table sugar mm -hmm. does. That's right. You know, so I mean, it jacks your blood sugar up quicker. And I mean, Vera knows a lot more about the mechanism that, that causes food addiction, but that certainly probably has to have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. And for me, if you've got a, if, I, if all I had was a mental obsession, then the issue would be I'd think about it, think about it, think about it. I'd grab something, I'd take a bite of it, and oh, that'd be okay. And then okay. I'd walk away from it, right? But that's not what happened. No. No, and by the latter stages of it, there was no such thing as okay. There was never enough. It was mm -hmm. no different than a drug addict, than a crack addict, than an alcoholic who just could never get enough. Mm -hmm. I could never get enough to feel good. This you know? is so intriguing. We have a caller, Lisa. Lisa. Hi. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing today? <laughs> there you are. Lisa, what is your question or your concern? much a concern but um, a comment. Um, I am somebody who I guess is still experiencing food addictions but I'm so so much healthier right now. Mm. I'm. Um, it just seems like to be that the light has turned on mm -hmm. um, but uh, when I was uh, in at the end of grade 8 and at the beginning of grade 9 I was definitely anorexic. I went down to as low as, I don't know, perhaps 75 pounds. It was a good loss of 25 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I remember even going through, through it um, as a 13, 14-year-old, I thought, well, they, they call anorexia a loss of ap appetite. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, no, I haven't lost my appetite. I'm thinking about food all the time, exactly. just as your other um, panelists yes. are saying. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, and, and now I, I, so I think somebody else, uh, one of the other panelists was also saying that there's uh, the um, athletorexia or however you want to term it, yep. where um, somebody is, they, they do eat a lot, but they just purge not by throwing up, but by exercising. So well, Lisa, you said that the light turned on for you. What was what? Can you explain what that's about? What the light? What happened to you? Uh, you know what? I I would just have to say that uh, a, f a family member. So, so that way, let's just say it's it's not too telling, anyways. Sure. <laughs> um, a family member had uh, suddenly died, and I thought, you know what? And uh, it makes you. It makes a person reevaluate their life, and I thought, yeah. how can this person who was much older than me um, still be climbing the roof, you know? And that's how he came to his unfortunate and untimely death was that he fell off the roof. I thought this is a guy who's active, who's basically healthy right up until his uh -huh. last breathing, uh, until his last living breath. Uh -huh. How can I, who's so much younger? you know, have all of this sickness with migraines and, right. and, you know, then I went to the opposite. Like, as I said, when I was younger, I went to anorexia and then I went to the other end where I was just yeah. shoveling food in and gained, like, I can't yeah. remember the last weight I was, but let's yeah. just say I think it was close to 200. And I was shocked when I uh, looked at myself in pictures and that's why I didn't take family pictures. And yeah. I thought, look at this. Yeah, you know I'm, that's I'm it. excluding myself from my family moments and from my life, so it just dawned on me that I can't give away this life. Are you still are you still experiencing uh, uh, your eating um, um, now as a problem, or do you feel like you've gotten past that? I think it's it's under control. Uh -huh. um, right. I still I do I love food. I'm not going to, but I, now I enjoy it rather than. Oh, shoveling food in in high quantities and like yeah. to the point where you're I'm, do, do you feel and like, this might do, be exaggerating but do you feel like you're still obsessed about it at all like think about it even if you're not eating you're still thinking about it no oh, okay no and you that's where I can say that's where the difference is is that I'm enjoying okay, the food Lisa I'm, Lisa I'm sorry I'm gonna have to just ask you to stay on the line with us we're gonna be right back after the break but do stay on the line we'll be back with more addictions unplugged all right
There's only one place you can catch intense, hard-hitting women's roller derby. Rogers TV. Tune in and buckle up for exclusive action from Toronto Roller Derby. All airtimes at RogersTV.com. Premiering this May on Hollywood Suite. We are going to remember all of the good time. In Vegas, everybody's got to watch everybody else. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Those six-year-olds, how much trouble can they be? They're horrible. Are you a virgin? And you are Gina? Gina. Hey, what's up? Call 1-888-ROGERS-1 to order. Every year, a firearm takes a family member's life. Help prevent this type of tragedy by ensuring that your firearms are unloaded, locked up, and stored properly at all times. Community safety and crime prevention. It's your responsibility. A message from the Canada Safety Council. How will the upcoming provincial election affect you and your neighborhood? Find out on the local campaign on Rogers TV with Dale Goldhawk. Featuring candidate debates from your writing. Broadcast details at rogerstv.com slash election. Welcome back to Addictions Unplugged. I'm Bev Miller and joining me each week is Dr. Vera Tarman. Today we're discussing and taking your questions on food addiction. Are you lost in a battle with food? Whether it be binge eating or not eating enough, give us a call with your questions and concerns. Mm -hmm. So Vera, we're on the line with Lisa. Mm -hmm. Lisa, carry on. Well, yeah. I, I, Lisa, I just wanted to say you said that you were controlling your foods now and enjoying them. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the things that both Mike and I um, believe is that if you if a person is truly a food addict, um, the ability to control gets lost pretty quickly. And so I'm not saying you're a food addict, I don't know if you are, but if you should find that you can't control your food or you can't control your thinking, you might be a food addict. In which case then what you'll have to do is, uh, is, is, is use a different type of strategy, which is generally speaking um, one where you have to say, I'm not going to eat sugar or flour or whatever the trigger food is, as opposed to trying to control it and enjoy it. So, I mean, it's, that's kind of up to you to figure out your story. But uh, I, I have to tell you that uh, if you're a food addict, um, the strategy will have to be that you have to figure out what your trigger foods are and stop. Um, I, I wouldn't, if, can I take a moment here, yeah, uh, Edward? I just absolutely. want to say, in case people are wondering, am I a food addict? Uh, just a couple of questions um, to ask yourself beyond the normal questions like, do you have an uh, inab inability to control uh, how much you intake and uh, if you're obsessing about it? I mean, those are pretty standard. But here's some other questions that uh, come from the 20 questions of food addiction. One of them, uh, aside from the normal one of, have you tried to stop and you can't? Another one will be, um, do you eat differently in private than you do in public? because maybe you're embarrassed about how you eat privately. Um, do you hide food? Um, do you eat secretly? Uh, like, do you have a relationship with food that is unusual, uh, like a little bit too much of a relationship, like Mike was saying, more important than uh, your, things. Your, your things that you do? Do you ever steal food? Steal food from <laughs> somebody else? Steal food from a store? Be willing to even get arrested. I mean, that's crazy. Wow, People will get arrested for the stealing three Mars bars, but they, that's not unheard of. Do you eat to escape feelings? Um, uh, and do you feel guilty about how you eat? So I mean, if, even if you just get three of those, four of those, five of those, you might be a food addict. Mm -hmm. M might I say? Yes. I, I could say yes, yes, yes to each and every single one of those before. Yes. And I'm, I, I don't mean to, now I can say I'm not a okay. food addict, but I can tell you that's the way I've lived my life for at least my, my, from, from my uh, teen years yes. to my, well, until about maybe three or four years ago and as i was saying um before to, to beverly that you know it was a light mo it was a yeah. life moment that was so extreme that my my uh, uncle's words came hauntingly back to me his last words way before his final death was right. you are too young for this 
Mm-hmm. And that was because I kept on getting sick, and yeah. I'm sure it was from my unhealthy lifestyle and so, from both the eating and the inactivity. Okay. Now I have a beautiful balance between enjoying the food and also enjoying physical activity okay. and not going uh, grudgingly. Uh, so Lisa, Lisa, yeah. uh, just, just to say that um, not everybody who struggles with food is a food addict. We can probably estimate that the, maybe 5 10%, maybe 20%. Mm-hmm. I mean, I actually have some numbers we can talk about later are. So if you're not a food addict, I would say great because that means you'll have a, a more normal life yeah. than food addicts do. Fantastic. No, but what I'm saying is now I know that uh, the uh, people who deal in the addiction world don't like to use. Oh no, I'm uh, they, I'm not no longer an addict. I can honestly say that I answered yes to each and every single okay. one of those questions about yes, I would hide my food, I would eat in private, I would eat differently in public than in private. Okay. I have stolen. So this is why I'm saying that. Th- that the okay, list that's, that's that's great Lisa that's yeah. great wonderful Lisa yeah. we're so glad that you're not anymore that you're enjoying a good relationship with food mm-hmm. now Absolutely. thank you so much for your call and oh, thank you for watching thank you so much I mean I think Mike probably that's not your experience uh, my experience no, no. So um, and different people have different experiences you know one thing I've learned is that that again it's gonna work differently for different people yeah. right. for me um, the abstinence model was the only way to go and I've found now I'm in a place where I can enjoy my food, right? But it's a different kind of food and it's mm-hmm. a different kind of enjoyment. So right. there's nothing wrong with barbecuing myself a nice steak with maybe some braised asparagus with, you know, onions and, and some ni- a nice baked potato. But the difference is I enjoy it and I stop after a plate. Mm-hmm. You know? Fantastic. That's mm-hmm. the difference. That is the difference. We've got a lot of callers tonight. Yeah. Hot topic. We have Marlena. Are you there? Yes, hello. Hi. What is your comment? Um, I've struggled with food. I've had a a love-hate relationship with food and my weight has reflected that yeah. and in the, the last year um, uh, and my weight has been anywhere as 50 pounds overweight to 100 pounds um, uh, 150 pounds overweight yeah so um, I, I fluctuate now in the last year I've um, was so convicted to become a vegetarian I won't get into the reasons why and um, this is the one thing that I have not uh, flip flops on. I, I'm, I just can't go back to eating meat for the various reasons. Mm-hmm. And there is a misconception that vegetarians are slender, but I've got to tell you, my food no. addictions, um, the flour, wheat, and sugars have yep. have actually gone through the roof yep. because of it. And I don't know if I subconsciously think I'm depriving myself of an ingredient that I I don't miss. Mm-hmm. I don't miss meat, you but. Know, Marlena, um, you, you, you got yourself into um, an interesting scenario that happens a lot with people. Um, w- when you become a vegetarian, there, I guess there's a belief because you're not eating meat, you're eating healthily. But you're, you're going to be, because you're, you're not eating meat, you're going to have to take extra care to, to be sure that you're eating foods that are healthy that, and, and also vegetarian. And, and I mean, it, it, you can be a pasta and bread addict uh, and still be a vegetarian, but that's terribly, terribly unhealthy. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to find the, uh, the good vegetables that have the proteins that you need and that don't don't have the the uh, the uh, and, and the, the, that are the complex carbs. Um, it's very possible to be a, a, a food addict in recovery with vegetarianism, but you're going to have to be careful because you're right. There's so much food that's vegetarian, but it's still very unhealthy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and um, as a dietitian and a vegetarian, yes. I might add, vegan. Um, let me just encourage you. Uh, There's a lot of resources online. You can go to pcrm.org. It's a really fantastic resource with lots of great uh, information on good, healthy vegetarianism. And uh, I applaud anyone who does the vegetarian route, Mm -hmm. but you've got to know what you're doing. Yes. And uh, just a quick little plug there for dark leafy greens that are very beneficial in curbing that craving for yes. sugars. Dark leafy greens, Marlena, dark leafy greens. Because they're complex carbs. Yeah, they're, absolutely, they're not sugar in absolutely, yes. yes. Anyway, sure. th- Marlene, thank you so much for calling in with that question because that is that's a very common misconception. Just like you said, that's vegetarianism right. un, 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 uh, with, without caution is not necessarily healthy. That's very true. Thank you so much for watching, Marlena. All right, on to Kim. Kim, are you there? Yes, hello. Hi, Kim. What's your comment tonight? Um, well, I have a 14-year-old daughter that I am extremely concerned about. Mm. Um, we noticed there was some type of a food issue at uh, as young as three years old. Yep. Um, we were picking her up from school one day, and she saw a piece of donut on the ground outside and went to pick it up to eat it. Yes. Since then, her food addiction has spiraled beyond belief. Yep. 
we've tried doctors, we've tried counseling, we've tried everything. Yes. Um, she's desperate not to be an addict. She knows she has an issue. Yes. She eats if she's bored, if she's sad, if she's angry. Um, yes. She used to stand over me when she was five years old. I'd eat slower than her, and she would be waiting with a fork to help me with my dinner. Mm -hmm. um, she's desperate not to be the way she is. Yes. And we just don't know what to do anymore. You know, I mean, let, let me let me start with that, and then Mike, I'd like you to really uh, pick it because he's he's really the one that's going to give the experience of this. Um, uh, you know, one of the things is when people seek out medical help or uh, just sort of the general help out there. The unfortunate thing is because nobody has bought this concept of food addiction. It's not yet a diagnosis. Um, unfortunately, um, what they'll do with your daughter is is say, here's a proper food plan which includes the trigger foods, um, and they don't. Except that, that, that I mean, we're saying this is the reason why Mike and here, uh, Mike and I are here, is to say that this is a real entity and it's a very serious entity and it requires a different solution than what you're going to get from the general medical uh, um, uh, advice. And right. the general the medical advice is to eat just a little bit of something, but mm -hmm. still eat the, basically in moderation. That does not work for a food addict. Yes. And so, no, Mike, the doctors have passed this on. Yeah. Do you want to take from it one from to another? Uh, abs abs um, they tested her for Willy Prada and said that's yes. not it. That's right. And if they can't find anything medical, nobody wants to help us. No, what, what we have to do is get more services for food addiction. But, I mean, right now, all we've got are people who are coming out like Mike to say, I've done it, and I've done it successfully. So, Mike, if you want to just uh, give your experience again. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm... Because I'm you, you also, you also uh, advocate professionally what to do, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, here's the thing. I didn't do it in isolation. I didn't do it alone. Um, I'm part of a peer support group that gets together and together we have found that we can do what we can't do alone. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have done this alone. You know, I was saying that, that my problem is really, is really three problems and I mentioned the first two. It's a mental obsession and if your daughter's like me, that's what she's got and I had it when I was her age too so yeah. I get it. Right. Yeah. But then you've got this physical craving that gets initiated and Vera was touching on it. Mm -hmm. If you eat the trigger food, you can't help but want more. Yes, you can't, yes. and it's not want more, it's crave more, must have more, must, mm -hmm. I'll do anything to get more. Vera asked the question, have you ever stolen food? I used to do that all the time mm -hmm. because I had to get my fix. Mm -hmm. So She won't go to that extreme. Well, and, and she may not, you know, I mean, different, it manifests different in different people, mm -hmm. but the, the third problem is, is, is it's really a spiritual one. Now, you saw that I'm, I'm an ordained spiritualist minister. I'm not here to talk about religion in any way, shape, or form. Right. I'm just talking about the part of the human being that, that well, there's a whole, and we want more. I mean, it's, Maslow talked about it in his hierarchy of needs, right? We want self-actualization. We want to get beyond ourselves mm -hmm. where we are. Mm -hmm. I believe that people who suffer from food addiction are actually that times 10, mm -hmm. that to the extreme, and really they're looking for something else. Carl Jung talked about this in, mm -hmm. in the early days of Alcoholics Anonymous, where he thought the alcoholic was searching for something way beyond him or herself. Mm -hmm. And I think your daughter's probably like that. So I'm going to tell you, um, there are ways of getting in touch with me. I don't know if I can say my phone number over the air, um, or, or, but um, we have this peer support well, group. We have your website. Okay. Yeah. You know what? And I can help professionally, but there's also, there's me, there's a group Mm -hmm. that I meet with and it doesn't cost anything mm -hmm. and I'd be happy to bypass the professional thing. I'm not here to sell myself. I'm here to help other food addicts. Mm -hmm. right. And so if you want to get in touch with me and, and I'd be happy to come out and meet you, you and your daughter yeah. and introduce you to what I did and it doesn't cost a cent. There's we the thing. We would be thrilled for that. Yeah. We, yeah. We've been so desperate and trying so hard. Yes. We had one doctor that said to her, um, we went through sick kids to start and everything was referred on and one doctor at a yeah. different hospital said oh just eat whatever you want and yeah. I'll see you in a month you know that's exactly what the, th th that's why we're here because yeah. we get so frustrated frustrated by that advice right and, and it, no, it, it, in a month. It, that's right so it's because they're not they're not buying the concept of food addiction but it sounds like you are and there is a solution out there but it's not in the medical realm right. yet I mean my book hopefully will bring that out uh, you know within a year that, that's that's my passion to do that um, I do see it is absolutely an obsession and yes. to eat endlessly yes. not wanting to no. yep. 
but yeah. she says it makes her feel better. That's right. Exactly. I mean, it, 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 it's a bit like you've got an itch, and the more you scratch it, the more you itch, but the more you want to scratch it, and it's just endless. It's endless. And the way to stop it is to actually find your hands and don't scratch it. And, and that withdrawal pattern will last uh, for two or three weeks, and then you're done. And right. then, and, and then Kim, okay, what's going to happen is, is your daughter is going to be a different person, probably more sensitive, probably more um, vibrant than ever, because the focus is not going to be on food, but on life. I mean, it's actually actually an exciting thing for her if she can get past this. Right, because she does, you know, when she's with her friends, she's fine. Yeah. When she comes home, she'll binge. And then she gets angry if I don't have, there's only healthy right. food in my house. She wants her drug. She, she yeah. gets angry yes. to the point where it can become physical almost yes. because there's nothing satisfying. It's, I don't want fruit, I don't want vegetables, I don't want, I want bad stuff and there's nothing. That's right, that's it's, right. She wants her drug. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So she's got to stop her drug, but she needs help, and that's what Mike was saying. Uh, he, he, she can't do this alone, and, but there is help out there. Yes, well, thank you very much. Great, thank you. Kim, thank you so much for calling. And I love the way that you're, you're likening this to a drug. Yes. Because if you're trying to stop drugs, you can't just have a little bit. No, exactly. You've got to stop it's, it. It's like, saying, it's like saying to a crack addict, you know, just have a, a little puff you exactly. know, on the weekend. There's no moderation here. No, no, there's no moderation. No You've moderation. got to actually physically just cut that thing off. Yes, you do. You Amazing. Yes. Thank I was, you. I was at a presentation that, that Vera did one time, and I love the way she put it. She said, you know, as... as, as in her capacity as an addictions counselor, right, she would never advocate for withdrawing someone slowly off crack cocaine mm -hmm. and then after three months slowly reintroducing crack cocaine mm -hmm. into their regimen. Mm -hmm. Why would we do that? Exactly. Why would someone say, you know, you're a food addict. Yes, I agree I'm a food addict. I can't handle sugar, yes. why would I start reintroducing it? Basically, the logic doesn't work. It, it you know? really doesn't, absolutely not. Yeah. If you've got a food addiction, if you're struggling with food, give us a call this evening. Our next caller, Dee, are you there? I'm here. Hi, Dee, how, how are Hi. you? What's your comment? Hi, um, I just wanted to comment. I'm, I struggled with uh, weight all my life. Um, and it's just about two and a half years ago now that I was lucky enough to hear um, this discussion about food addiction. I didn't know anything about food addiction. Mm -hmm. I had been to all the doctors and yes. weight loss programs, drugs, up to surgery, everything. And yes. um, at that point, I had lost some weight, and my mind just wouldn't stop with the food. Yep. I was putting back on the weight I had lost. And um, yes, in any form, drinking or whatever after the surgery, uh, melting down, but the the obsession wouldn't go away. That's right. Mm -hmm. <clears> then <throat> I heard the lecture and about the cocaine and how your brain lights up, and that yes, to me was the best thing I ever heard in my life because oh, somebody understood how I felt, and at that point I sought help for food addiction. And um, I, I tried being abstinent on my own of sugar, flour, wheat, and I played with it. It's I did hard. okay, but I, I wasn't. No. I needed support. I did reach out to um, the RFA group for help, and okay. um, I have been able to work with people that understand That's the great. addiction. Yeah. And are there to support me through, and, and Barry said it, it's, um, the withdrawal was, was rough, mm -hmm. and um, when I had the support, <laughs> these people are very um, supportive, uh, yeah. they're there for you because they know what you're, what you're going through, yeah. and um, I got through that part, and, um, and how's the I mental help for Kim. Kim just speaking about her yeah. daughter. Um, unfortunately, my children suffered from it as well. Uh -huh. And um, my daughter in her late teens, I brought um, to hear the same, to hear about the food addiction part. And I just asked her to listen yeah. that she had to do it herself or yeah. take it or leave it. Well, yeah. she took it and she's lost 104 oh, pounds. Oh my God, thank you so I much. I lost 130 pounds and kept it off. Oh my other gosh. daughter's down 80 pounds and kept it off. Fantastic. See, this, this is and, what Kim um, needs to hear, great. My, yeah. You know, I just can't say how grateful I am, but um, uh -huh. for you putting this out there and, and make, <laughs> 
continuing on with it for people because it's, yeah. it breaks my heart to see people with who don't know about the addiction yeah. part because I no doctor or weight loss clinic or any not not any kind of weight program right. mm -hmm. certainly right. didn't help me in yeah, all my years and I'm getting on in years so the last three years two yeah. and a half years I've almost two years abstinent and today there was three celebrations at work and I didn't pick up one wow. anything it's wall to wall food and it just doesn't even appeal to me it anymore doesn't. because See, I've got the that's, cravings. That's the thing people need to hear it doesn't even appeal to you anymore is it, what, no. isn't that a great life? It's a great life yeah. It's, um, yeah. I'm off medications I'm off Right. Machine. I'm Fantastic. healthy, See, I'm it, it, able to exercise, I'm just so grateful to have found yeah. the reason, the real reason why I couldn't wow. control myself and to get the support from the RFA group and people yeah. who understand and I'm just thrilled to see you having programs like this for, thank you, Dee. for people. Thank you. Okay? Thank you, Dee. You know, well, thank like, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're, Good you're, luck. You're, Bye -bye. Thank you. You're giving a message of oh. hope to people so that they can hear this. Absolutely. Um, and and I mean, she mentioned RFA, which is one of the 12-step groups mm -hmm. um, for food addiction. So th there are groups out there, and they'll be on the website. Mike, Mike is going to give information as well. Um, I do want to just say quickly that um, I, she mentioned the, the lectures. This, these are some uh, lectures that I do. And what, 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 essentially what I'm trying to do, and it's in my book as well, is show how the food, uh, um, that, that in the reward pathway in the brain, that we're actually wired. I mean, in a sense, food is our first addiction. Uh, we, we, we are primed, all of us, every, even a non-sugar um, addict, is primed to want sugar. Um, and, but some of us are more sensitive to the sugar than others. Uh, and uh, you know, you can actually see in the brain that that the the reward pathway, the wiring, is as potent, as powerful, um, in the very same places as as it is for cocaine addiction, as it is for tobacco, as it is for opiate addiction, as it is for alcoholism. Wow. It's all the same thing, and and that's why we. I mean, Mike and I are here to say it, um, we've got to treat it with the same respect, mm -hmm. absolutely, and with the same treatment. absolutely. Well, you know, on our tongues. I mean, physiologically, yes. you know, our receptors are for carbohydrates. Exactly. And exactly, so, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, Dee, thank you so much for giving your, it's a real message of hope. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much, Dee, for your call. Are you wired? Are you too wired, <laughs> overly wired for sugars or for any other foods? Give us a call and let's talk about that. We've got uh, Healy on the line. Healy, are you there? Uh, yes, yes. Hi, what is your comment? Well, um, my comment is to Dr. Vera. Uh, Dr. Vera, you know me very uh, well. I, I do. A, I work as a personal trainer, and uh, Dr. Vera, you've been a client of mine for uh, close to a decade now. Yes. And um, many clients uh, do face uh, the issues that you're talking about, uh, the food and uh, being addicted and just trying to um, start a good uh, exercise program as well as uh, eating properly. Yes. So my question is, so when would be the best time to introduce people with food addiction to exercise routine and what exercise protocol okay. seems to be the most effective? Yeah, you know, Heli, let me just ask you, she's my personal trainer, <laughs> uh -huh. so this is great, thank you. I <laughs> love it. Um, um, I, mean, I mean, how many people come to you saying they want to work out so that they can lose weight? Oh, it's probably um, probably all of them. Uh, they all have uh, yeah. at least a little bit of weight. Um, they want to look better. Right. Um, I think that's the number one reason they come. Yes. So I think that the idea of proposing food, and maybe not the word food addiction, because people don't like to hear that word addiction, but to propose the concept of food is good on day one to start talking about it. But I mean, Mike, I know you've written a lot about um, people coming and wanting to uh, get, you know, deal with their weight issues through exercise, but then that means that they can still eat their bad food. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, for me, the way I approach it is it depends on how bad the problem is. You take a, a client that I've, I had fairly recently. He's um, six foot, 32 years old, 450 pounds, and he's an mm. extreme binger. Wow. Um, it, first off, he doesn't move that well, so um, my, my prescription really was a little bit of exercise, but what I want to do is I want to show them that they can lose the weight without exercise. Mm -hmm. My philosophy is this, and I say this to them. I say, if I wanted to become a world-class investor, what I would do is I'd read everything there was to read on Warren Buffett, that Warren Buffett had written, and I would, I would live my life the way Warren Buffett lived in order to become like Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, with the weight loss game. So what I do is I approach, and I do this personally, I approach thin people who've never had a problem in their life with weight, 
and ask them two questions. I say, why do you eat, why do you exercise? And inevitably, 70, 80 percent of them don't even exercise. Hmm. That's telling right there. Mm -hmm. They don't use exercise in order to stay thin. Mm -hmm. So it must have something to do with diet. Mm -hmm. And so when you focus on the diet end of it, they say, well, you know, I eat when I'm hungry and I stop mm -hmm. when I'm full and, you know, it's food is food. And, it, and they don't think about it. Whereas if I ask somebody, well, if you were to ask me on the front end of this thing, why did I eat? Well, I love food. It's wonderful. It's an experience. Uh -huh. It's all the, totally different from what thin people say. So what I want to do is communicate to my clients uh -huh. as a personal trainer, you need to be acting and thinking like a thin person, which means, and you know, it was my experience too, the first 40 pounds of my weight loss was done with entirely no exercise. Yeah. Mm. You can always lose weight without exercising, but you can't out exercise bad eating if mm -hmm. it's bad enough. That's and right. usually it's bad enough. Yeah, you know? that's right. One of the things, Heli, about um, the type of exercise that you promote, which is super slow, is uh, it's actually really good for people who are overweight because it's it's a very um, easy type of weight um, uh, weight burning exercise. Um, I mean, it, uh, what a lot of people do, I, I bet you see this all the time, Mike, is they go into the gym, they do that fast, 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 fast uh, um, uh, cardio um, with the hopes to burn all those calories, and it's just ter terrible on their knees, on their hips. Uh, they, I mean, if, if they don't have arthritis, they're going to get arthritis. Whereas if you have a type of exercise, a gentle exercise, like the kind that you do, it's actually much better because you're not doing that kind of vigorous, it's very slow, mm -hmm. and it's very um, a building, and it's very gentle. I mean, I think it's a, um, a great exercise. But really, it's, it's, it's food first, exercise later. Food first. And so, Mike, you know, just summarizing what you were saying there mm -hmm. is eat to live, not live to eat exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. And exercise for health. Yeah. That's what yes, thin people not, do. Yeah. Yes. Exercise for health, cardiovascular exercise, yes. meaning cardiovascular health, and especially for women, mm -hmm. bones, joints, right. uh, muscles, you know, right. osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, yeah. that sort of thing. Exactly. Resistance training, you need it. Super slow is great. I, I incorporate that in my own personal workouts all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but those are the reasons you should do it. The only clients I ever, ever, ever advocate using cardiovascular training to lose weight with our competitive bodybuilders mm. when they're going into a competition in order to shed the extra pound or so of fat. That's great, it. great. The extra pound or so, or not, so. not, not That's the hundred. It. Yeah, <laughs> it's the extra pound or so to get right. down to 4% body fat, you yes. know? So. All right, Haley? Yes. Thank you so much for your call this evening. Thanks for watching. Do you have any difficulties with food? Are you addicted to something, to food specifically? Give us a call. Let's talk about it tonight. We've got Desney on the line. Desney, you there? Yes, I am. Thank Hi. you for having me. Hi. What is your comment? Hi. I, I have a few. I, as I, I was stating earlier, I am a recovering alcoholic and drug addict. Yep. And I have been clean and sober for a number of years now. Yes. However, I yes. have now, my disease has now manifested itself in food. However, you're there right. There you go. And I am binge eaten. Yep. And, and it didn't occur to me until I'd go on a severe, severe binge. Yes. And I would feel all the same symptoms oh that I God. felt. Well, coming off the drugs, the guilt, the shame. Yes. The, oh my God, I, I'm disgusted with myself. Yes. All this remorse, and and I am struggling so bad. Yes. I even promised my children if I if I had another binge, I was going to seek yes. help. Well, I had another binge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Desney, can you just hold on one sec? I want to say something, but hold on because we're, we're yeah. going to come back to you. Um, you know, I, I've been I've been told by um, phys physicians and also from the, the general medical community, um, one of the reasons why food addiction does not exist is because there's no withdrawal pattern. Well, Desney can certainly uh -huh. say, come on. Uh, I mean, they said, I'm sorry, there's, you don't get the shakes and the sweats like you do with alcohol. You don't get seizures. No, but I mean, if you talk to somebody who's binged, like we're talking now here with Desney, the next day you feel bloated, you feel foggy, you feel literally shaky, right. you're on the toilet with diarrhea. How does that look different than alcohol? Exactly. Yeah. Now, you mentioned that a withdrawal process would be about two weeks. Did <laughs> I hear you say that? Two weeks if you abstain completely. Right. Anyway, Desney, I just had to throw that in. Please okay. continue. No, that, that's okay, and, it, and it's so yeah. right because in the in the interim, yeah. I have now have IBS and, like you said, diarrhea brutally. Yes. So I know I'm going to feel this way, but yet I still do, do it. Yes, yes, mm. that's addiction. And there lies the disease, and, and it yes. took me a very long time, like my drug addiction, to admit the fact that no, yep. you know, I just like chocolate, but no, I have a sickness. Yes. And I've gained weight. I'm in menopause. I'm like a ticking yes. time bomb. Period. Yes. 
Yes. And and I don't know what to do yeah. or where to go to get so, help. So, Destiny, we'll, we'll get back to you in a second. I just want to give you another example. Thank you. You're really giving some nice uh, um, illustrations for um, the people who are watching about what it's like to live with food addiction and especially coming off of a drug. Now, I'm an addictions doctor and I see this all the time. Right. You know, I work at Renaissance and uh, I probably see about a thousand patients over the course of a year. And I got to tell you, at least 50% of those people will say to me, I can't believe I've gained 20 pounds in, in, in three weeks. And, 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 and literally, I've heard people say, you know what, if this continues, I'm going to go back to my drug. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and there's even a joke in the community, you know, I'll go back on the, quote, Jenny Crack diet. My goodness. And, you know, we hear that from smokers all the time. I don't want to give up my smoking because I'm yes. going to gain weight. Exactly. Because I'm going to, you know, put something else yeah. in my mouth. Yeah. And, you know, if you go into an AA meeting, for example, um, there's all the cookies. Like, mm -hmm. it, 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 this is standard that a person stops their drug and then and they pick up food. Eating. And food is very encouraged. And so exactly what happens to a Desney happens to people. But so you're mm -hmm. saying, Desney, you want to get help. Yeah, and I just want to plug in there that I did go to Renaissance actually twice, and it's an amazing pr um, place at the Grand Monroe Center. Yeah, great. Thank so, you. yes, I've been there. And it, yeah, I definitely heard that term when it was the second time I came in there about the Ginny Crack diet. Yeah. And it's so true. It would take me a weekend yeah. to lose this weight. Yes, if I, I know. If I started smoking crack again. I know, and, and it's, it's so hard it's, to be motivated to be clean. But, it is. But the thing is, is no, if you go back to the Jenny Crack, I mean, you're still with the obsession because the addiction hasn't mm -hmm. changed. So what we got to do is get the whole addictive pattern stopped, and that means abstaining from your trigger foods. Now, do you know what your trigger foods are, Desney? Chocolate. There you go. Number one, chocolate. You didn't even have to think about it. No, it's, that, that is it. And how prepared are you to stop chocolate? I want to, and then there's that little piece in me right. that loves it. I love the taste of chocolate. Of course. Who doesn't love chocolate? You don't want exactly. to give up your drug. Yeah, that's what well, it this is. This is it, but it leads me to the, the chips, yes. then the ice cream, yes. and then I've eaten about 20 different things. I'm practically crying because I'm in pain, and yet I'm yeah. still eating. So have you looked into any of the 12-step programs that are around food? I, I went on Overeaters Anonymous. Yeah. I, Checked it out. I do have their schedule on my wall, yeah. but I have yet to make. Okay. Now you're meeting. gonna. You, you know how they say in in in, in treatment, um, sobriety first or first yeah. things first. You're gonna have to treat this with the same kind of respect as you treat your other addictions, and that means you're gonna have to get yourself to a meeting and and you know 90 and 90 go to a meeting every day. You got to get the support. Mike said he could not have done this alone. You couldn't have done your addiction alone. Your other addictions, you cannot mm -hmm. do this one. This one is sneaky. It's insidious. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. People say it's harder to quit than their previous drug. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to treat this with the same respect um, as, as your other addiction. Uh, anyway, there is help out there though, but you're going to have to do it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for calling. Thank you so much, Desney. Do you have a difficulty with food? Give us a call. De definitely give us a call. Going back to that drug thing. Yeah. You know, treating it like a drug. Yes. It's not just the willpower. You no. can't do it that way. That's this right. is so amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. as a dietitian, I mean, I'm, I'm counseling people about these things, but I'm learning a lot tonight as well. Yeah. Now, one of the things is like you're, you're a dietitian, and so you see a lot of people who probably are overweight and yeah. have issues with diabetes and high blood pressure and all the rest of that stuff. And, it, you know, not everybody is a food addict. Um, and uh, we don't actually know who and how many because it, until we get in diagnosis, we're not doing clinical research to figure that out. Exactly. But there was actually um, um, uh, there is actually some work in the states, and my book talks about this too. Um, there's something called the Yale Food Addiction Inventory that has just been published. It's been peer approved, um, and that came out about one, two, maybe two or three years ago. Um, and they're using it's a tool that we can now use for clinical research. And there was one study that was done. Um, uh, and, and a, few, a few more, and here's some estimates. We, we don't mm. know if this is true, but here's some estimates that about 10% of underweight people are food addicts, about 6% of normal, you don't have to be obese, 6% uh -huh. uh, of normal people are food addicts, about 17% of what we call overweight, which is um, about uh, what the body, body mass index of um, over, over 25, 27, yeah, 20, oh, right. 25, yeah. And, and then um, about 37% of obese, which is body weight, uh, body mass index is over, over 30. So um, 
even people who are obese, are, it's, it's a 37%, probably. It's not everybody. Um, so the, the, the kind of thing, that the, the structure and the, almost the rigidity of what we're talking about doesn't apply to everybody. But, you know, if you, I think that people know, like just by those questions that I asked, right. if you think you are, um, then you may have to, you may be part of that small sub subset of the population. Wow, incredible. I want to get back after the break okay. to that uh, underweight population. Yes, yes, yes. But we'll be right back after the break with more help on Addictions Unplugged. Call us. Whether it's anatomical or emotional, naughty or nice, we'll take your most intimate calls and questions live on Sex at 11. I'm Rebecca Rosenblatt. Join me Thursday nights at 11 right here on Rogers TV. Rogers one to order. Megan, she's so happy in life. She's always smiling. When Megan was two, she had meningitis. They had to amputate both her legs and, and nine fingers. fingers. Megan copes really well with her amputation. All the support that warrants have given Megan. All the prestiges and all the moral supports. Is making the person she is today. Yeah, she's really determined. She wants to do everything by herself. I like to play. <laughs> Delicious gluten-free cooking on our next Daytime Toronto. Plus, we'll discuss boat safety and see some magnificent homes on the Bluffs Home Tour for a Cause. On Thursday's Daytime, only on Rogers TV. to Addictions Unplugged. Today, we're discussing and taking your questions on a hot topic, food addiction. And we've got Sue on the line. Sue, are you there? Is Sue on the line? Not as yet. Okay, we'll come back in a little bit when Hello. Sue's ready. There uh, you are. Okay, hi Sue, there. hi. <laughs> What's your comment for us? Well, I was just hoping that uh, Dr. Vera could speak a little bit on the idea of um, multiple addictions with food addiction, mm. because I think that I was a food addict uh, from the very beginning, from probably from birth yep. or very early in life, yep. um, and went on to struggle with some other addictions. Yep. Um, and in the end, what I seem to have come back to and what I'm left with is food addiction yeah you know this is um, interesting that you say uh, as other callers have said that you felt that you had this from day one we're actually yeah. finding mm -hmm. that there is some um, abnormalities in the DNA uh, um, uh, like there appears to be a genetic abnormality uh -huh. that uh, people who, who have who suffer from alcoholism have um, right. and and obesity, which probably means food addiction, and cocaine. And it's the very same abnormality. It's the dopamine 2 receptors um, that right. are, are in some way altered or, or changed or different. Um, and actually, the more a person becomes obese, the more abnormal they become. So that the more obese a person becomes, the more um, uh, they, they struggle with food addiction. Um, yeah. uh, so it is that there is actually something happening in the brain. The brain is different with food addiction, but the same as other addictions. So you wanted me to comment on multiple addictions. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the same changes that occur with op opiates and cocaine and alcohol. Um, mm -hmm. So it's very easy, uh, uh, as, as our previous caller, to put down one substance, substance and then just pick up another because it's the same yeah. phenomenon of addiction occurring. Yeah. Well, and that's certainly been my experience. Yes. Definitely. Now, are you still suffering from food addiction now, or have you figured, um, um, have you gotten some help? I'm currently in a 12-step program. That okay. I've been in for many for many years, but yes. I I finally have some a few weeks of uh, sobriety or abstinence behind me. Yes, and I'm feeling really, it's like a different life for me. Oh, yes. yes yeah. Yes, when I'm is. in my food, I have a lot of um, other things happening for me. I have a lot of depression. I have a lot of anxiety. Yes. Um, and you know, I don't know what comes first. 
uh-huh. the chicken or the egg or the food or, or the mood uh, disturbances. Yeah. But I've actually had to be hospitalized a, a few times yeah. voluntarily. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so it's no, it's not. Um, you know. You know uh, Sue, I'm glad that you brought up the piece about mood because uh, the reason why people use food is because it does it does make a person feel better. It's comfort food, like it really does bring yes. comfort. Um, and yes. you know, as much as a, um, a piece of chocolate is as as anesthesia um, has the same anesthetic effect as taking a, a Tylenol or, or, or something like it, it. It actually has an anesthetic effect. Right. Um, yeah. But the thing about you say you don't know which is which came first. Um, we do know that when a person eats food and they're in the food in the way that you describe, um, right. you know, you, you get a you get a, a flood of emotion, the euphoria, and then you crash, which is the depression and the anxiety, and the withdrawal yeah. pattern is creating that that anxiety and, and uh, depression. So it's very right. hard to be able to figure out which is which. Yes. Yeah. Well, the only way I've had any luck, and I have been um, in and out of diets and programs. And, right you know, for my whole life. And the only luck I have ever really had and any freedom yes. has been from complete abstinence from sugar, wheat, flour, right. corn, and high food, uh-huh. high fat food. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. And volume. And volume. And volume too, exactly. Um, yeah. Mike, did you experience that too, the mood uh, fluctuation? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, and that was the problem. That's where I realized I was in trouble because I was using, still trying to use food to modulate and moderate my moods and it didn't work anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the phenomenon in all addictions, right? When you either die or you reach out for help, yeah. it stops working. Yeah. You know? And, and, and now that you're s- sober, I guess is the word you'd use, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, would you say that your mood is steady or different than it used to be? If you talk to my wife, you know, <laughs> you're going to see, you'll see the ups and the downs. But I mean, right. it, it's a lot more steady. It's a lot more controllable. I have different tools that I use to cope with the, the ups and the downs mm-hmm. of, of daily life. But I live within the normal, it's like a sine wave, right? The normal ups and downs that people go yes. into. I don't live in the extremes that I used to. That's right. That's so. right. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Sue, did you have one last thing you wanted to say? I just want to say, Dr. Vera, thank you so much for your work in this area. Oh, it thank you. is incredible. And it's so hopeful for someone like me. Well, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Sue, thank you so much for calling in. So tonight, what we've learned, there's no moderate thing here. No. You've got to, you've just got to stop. No, you've you've got to, first of all, just acknowledge if you are a food addict Uh. that you are, regardless of whether the medical or the uh, establishment acknowledges that. Um, you, you just got to find your own supports, uh, and then you're absolutely right. It's got to be abstinence. It's got to be abstinence. And you can't do it alone, as Mike says. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. Final words from you? 20 seconds? Just what Vera said. You can't mm-hmm. do it alone. If, if, if you're like us, if, if, if you're like me, if you're a food addict, it's not going to happen alone. Um, just reach out. There's been lots of uh, different 12-step groups on the uh, on the monitor mm-hmm. make a call reach out come to a meeting you can't lose it it doesn't cost anything right mm-hmm. you know um, and uh, you know I work with people who go to these meetings I can put you in touch with people um, if my website gets up they'd be happy to help you out mm-hmm. no charge you know, mm-hmm. get in touch yeah. I like that no charge no fantastic charge. <laughs> fantastic Vera your final words that that lovely thing you like to say okay uh, uh, the power is ours. Addictions unplugged. Let's unplug from the addiction. The power is ours. We can we can help each other, and there is hope. There is hope. That's, yes. and that's what we've learned tonight. People yes. calling and saying, "I've done it, Mike. Yes. You've done it." Yes. Kudos to you, and we're looking forward to your book. Yes. Well, we're out of time. On behalf of my co-host, Dr. Vera Tarman, and myself, I'd like to thank you, Mike, for sharing your story with us. And for the callers, for the viewers, any of you struggling, we want to give you hope. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.